Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Super Mega Baseball episode 165. My name is Mr. Hurricane. Thank you for joining me today as we finish off this season. A season that actually got out to an interesting start, but as of late, we have not been able to put together good enough offense to get these wins. So we close out the season today against the B-Wolves, of course, the team we spent most of this series building. And they have the leaders in many of the important categories. Leon Daniels has been excellent all season, Lance Adams and Dominic Carter as well. So here we go, facing some familiar faces, and Andy McKenzie is on the mound. And by the way, I think I'll be putting in some of these backups today that we don't get to see very often. Now, if I had just made all of these direct substitutions now, we'd have really poor fielding set up, so I didn't want to go with that to begin the game. But I'll get everybody involved. And up first, there is Jonathan Starks. That contact and that speed. So the Taki Masons on the mound, both aces ready to go. And yeah, you can tell I'm a bit scared here to begin the day. A lot of velocity here for Nataki Mason. Wow. 102. Good luck with that, Jordan. Or, uh, no, this is Jonathan now, not Jordan. Just got done playing some of that, however. Let's try the change up. And the change of speeds is too much for Jonathan. He strikes out looking. And now Maurice Manning. I sure miss this team. They were very good. And I can't believe they're keeping Andrew Ross on the bench. That is unfathomable. Here's a curveball. Another strikeout for Nataki Mason. And that takes us to the 404 hitting Lance Adams. 102 heat. We got to use this fastball while the energy is fresh for Nataki Mason. Look at that. Let's go again. Looking to strike out the side. Curveball low. And he hits it. It should drift into foul territory. Got it. Good start for Nataki Mason. But how about our hitting against the great Andy McKenzie? Look at those ratings. Those are solid across the board. He'll start us outside, 94 miles per hour. And a deep fly ball from Nate Bell. It won't make an exit, but we get the double off the wall. Nice start for us. I know it's just barely getting underway, but I'm pretty happy so far. Terrence Johnson's confidence. Whoops, can't be confident in that swing. Oh, behind it. When you can throw anything at 94 with movement, that's going to be an issue for me. See, he's going to keep going back to that pitch. Not sure if that's his cutter. 0-2 to Calhoun. What is that? Two straight strikeouts. Could see a lot of those today. Now Michael Riley trying to get something off this leadoff double, but it's not looking good. A line drive to center, and that is caught by Flash Jackson. Wow, they have Corey Boyd in cleanup role, and his ratings are super low. That does not make any sense. You're telling me you can't find a place for Andrew Ross. Dominant Carter. Still going at 102, grounded to second base. We had a really good start from Patrick Papa last episode, so maybe our starting pitching is turning a corner. Uh-oh, here he is, Leon Daniels. Leon almost had the triple crown wrapped up, but has slumped as of late. And we got the pop-up. Let's make sure Reggie can catch it. Great work so far from Nataki Mason. Here is Reggie Carter. And he'll send this to the gap. We might have back-to-back leadoff doubles. Will anything come of this one? Didn't want to test the extra base. Here's Alonzo Holland. The average is down to 207. And I've been relying more on contact swings with him. Uh-oh. Got to catch up to these. That's right. And also make contact. Rounded back to Andy McKenzie, and Holland is retired. You're going to treat your old running back like that, Andy? Come on now. Here's Tyler Adams. He is starting for Rashawn Brooks. I wanted to get at least one different player in the starting lineup. 
and Adams pops up. So again, we get the leadoff double and follow it up with absolutely nothing. Here's Kevin Martindale. And that might fall in. Awkwardly, it does. And Kevin Martindale has drove in the first run of the ball game. And that takes us to the pitcher, Nataki Mason. All right, Andy, what's your response to that? Uh-oh. Try it again, one and one. Man, chasing so much. That's a nasty pitch right there. I'm not even sure what that is. But it should not be able to move like that. So now we're against Flash Jackson with a soft ground ball. Got that. Darren Rose. Rose didn't have many good seasons for us when we played with the B-Wolves. And we get the soft ground ball again. Marcus Calhoun has this. How about Nataki Mason? Andy McKenzie now trying to get the first hit of the game. He's got really good power. And Mason back, or Andy back to Mason. We got it. One nothing as we continue on. Nate Bell 377 average. And it was not good to begin the year. For a long time, many of you wanted to see a different leadoff hitter. But patience has paid off. And I was close to making a change. But Nate Bell got it going just in time. Three straight innings with a leadoff double. Now it's Terrence Johnson. Okay, that's an easy take, Andy. Oh. Turned on that a bit early. Line drive to third base. Not quite a double play. Now Marcus Calhoun, just 11 RBIs with six home runs. Like to see some more RBIs in his second season. Lots of power here. Oh, close. And grazing the outside corner, two and two. A piece of this, and that's going to go into the gap. An RBI extra base hit for Marcus Calhoun. It is a one-out double. So the B-Wolves, by the way, enter with the best record in the league, and we are around the second worst record. Riley here pops up. Come on, yeah. dugout. Reggie Carter's turn. Now I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant to make some changes because I don't want to make the fielding worse if we have a chance to win this game. Reggie Carter goes down swinging. Taki Mason. Uh-oh. His four. Oh, I couldn't get there, and that's how the perfect game is broken up. Went the wrong way there for a moment, too. Let's hope it doesn't snowball. Maurice Manning as Starks takes off. He'll retreat. And the slider popped up. Mason getting a lot of quality outs. The defenders are not having to work too hard. Lance Adams. Runner takes off. Thank you, foul. Let's try some cutter action. Ooh, got him to reach. Yeah, you can throw his cutter with some movement at a very high speed. Adams battling here. Screw ball away. And the runner takes off. Ball cold and Starks is safe. Stolen bag for Johnny Starks. Come on, Lance. Adams pops it up. And now just one more to keep them scoreless. Corey Boyd is the batter, and he anticipates this, but a towering fly ball that is a bit far underneath. Here's Alonzo Holland in the fourth inning. Ooh, line drive to Dominic Carter. Tyler Adams, way inside. Can Adams come through? I'm not sure if he has any hits this season. And he won't get one here. Tyler Adams pops out to Leon Daniels. And Kevin Martindale, it's his turn. A bit low or a bit late. Come on, Kevin. Martindale gets a drive out to right center, but that's a deep fence. And Martindale does not have the power. We're through four. And it's still just one, or no, two zero. 
Forgot that we had the RBI hit from Marcus Calhoun. Maybe they're starting to figure some things out in their second trip through the order. Dominic Carter grounded to Riley. And of course, Leon Daniels with eight home runs. Leon pops up. So many pop-ups from the B-Wolves today. The B-Wolves won the first matchup rather handedly. So we can see just how far we've come in these matchups. We had a really cold streak with the offense, but I think that we're at least going to be in good shape for competing next year. Ground ball here to Rose at short. Now Nate Bell, two doubles on the day. Is he done? That would be a no! Fair ball! Grazing the chalk. It's the third extra base hit for Nate Bell. He might finish with a near 400 average. Now it's Terrence Johnson. Oh, man, that almost hit him in the chin. 2-0 now. Oh, that was a great pitch. A chopper here, and McKenzie makes the play as Bell advances 90 feet. Marcus Calhoun will try to drive him in again. You'd think with Bell reaching base so much that Calhoun will have more RBIs. One and two. Oh man, that is going and that's not coming back. Marcus Calhoun, see you later. How far? 473 feet. Andy McKenzie gives up the long ball. It's 4 nothing over dogs. Wow, what a game for us. Michael Riley's going to reach. He's got very impressive wheels. Reggie Carter. Almost swung at that. And the stamina is falling a good bit too for Andy. Fifth inning now complete, but we have done some damage. Meanwhile, Mataki Mason, smooth sailing. As he works into his sixth frame. Andy McKenzie. Trying to help his own cause and get back into this game. Still hitting triple digits. McKenzie was always a good hitting pitcher for us. But he strikes out looking. He can't believe it. As a matter of fact, I can't believe it either. Speared at third base by Calhoun. What a game. 4 nothing overdogs. And Holland grounds it quickly to Starks. I might start going to these backups. Tyler Adams, we're going to sub in Rashawn Brooks. He's got pretty good speed now. Hitting rating slowly but surely making their way north. Here is the 0-1, and it's high. All right, Rashawn. I promise I'll get you some hitting upgrades more next year. Want to help our bottom of the order. Unfortunately here, Brooks can't reach. And now Kevin Martindale, who's had a very quiet offensive season. And I think we're going to sub him out now for Adam Kirkpatrick. Want to get everybody involved on the bench. The pitchers all play enough. The hitters, though, they got to play to finish up the season. Two and one. Oh, up the middle, it's through. Wasn't sure that would sneak past. So a two-out hit for Adam Kirkpatrick brings up Nataki Mason. And we're going to let him pitch next inning. So he has to hit right up the middle. Didn't even move the reticle. Two aboard. And we go back to Nate Bell, who has three doubles. If he gets a hit here, he'll have a 400 average. Nate Bell. No, it's taken away. So close. For a moment, I thought he was going to have a 400 average. Maurice Manning to Riley. Good backhand. Not sure how much longer Mason's going to go, but the ratings haven't fallen much. Lance Adams strikes out looking. Wow, the best start of the season for any pitcher. A pop-up now. I can't believe the only hit he's allowed. I think the only hit he's allowed was on that 
like a little single off his forehead. Terrence Johnson, maybe we'll call on Carlton Sanders. Let's go, Carlton. Sanders pops it up into the shallow part of the gap. Can't even call it the gap. All right, Marcus Calhoun will face Eric Hancock as the B-Wolves go to their bullpen. He'll pop it up for somebody. Who wants this? Looks like Flash. And Michael Riley's turn. 11 RBIs for him. Same as Marcus Calhoun. And this is a base hit. Riley, though, has done it on significantly less home runs. Reggie Carter has six RBIs. He's going to go to the bench, and Everett Whitfield will come off to hit. So that means that pitchers will hit every chance remaining for us. It might only be one. Oh, a chopper gets through. Two on for the B-Wolves and Alonzo Holland at the average below 200. We'll take that. Rounded to third and the play is made. We're through seven. Nataki Mason still going strong. Another pop out. Well, pop up. But that's for Sean Brooks in center. He takes care of it. Leon Daniels. And that is through Leon Daniels with a hit. Okay, Leon, one of the hottest players of the season. He does reach, but they still have to try getting someone across. And this fastball is too much. Let's go to the cut fastball. Looking, got him, frozen. Darren Rose. This might be the most strikeouts we've had in the game as well. Oh, man, another from Nataki Mason. Please keep this up going into next year. Here's Rashawn Brooks, bottom eight. The B-Wolves are not going to be happy with this one. Whoops. A couple of reaches here by Brooks. And it hit him. Out of frustration, Eric Hancock lets this get away from him. Now Adam Kirkpatrick. Brooks takes off. And Rashawn Brooks is thrown out by Leon Daniels. Wanted to get some redemption there. He has updated, uh, upgraded speed, so I thought it'd work. I was wrong. Nataki Mason trying to not be the last hitter for us this season. Oops, I should probably pull that back. What? I guess I'm not using the reticle well. Oh no, slow grounder. They will turn two. Oh no, they won't, it's dropped. And another chance is given to Nate Bell. I don't think a hit will take him over 400, but it will be awful close. Three doubles already. Bell grounds it through. So he does go four for five, and we'll see what that does to his batting average. Carlton Sanders now has an at-bat. Ooh, behind it. Carlton Sanders, two strikes. Soft ground ball, and he's retired. So on to the ninth we go, and Ataki Mason will stay out there. Looking for a complete game shutout, and he's almost there. Riley with the first out. Jonathan Starks has one of their hits. And he has this and deep and gone to right field. The first run on the day, B-Wolves do score. And of all players, it's a Jonathan Starks home run. Still a fantastic game for Nataki Mason. We'll take him out now. And we're gonna put in Sammy Hawthorne, who was the most surprising player of the year. With his dominant pitching through most of the season, and he'll look to end it for us on a high note. Lance Adams is their last batter here. Well, if he gets out, he is. Hawthorne finds the corner. Climbing the ladder now. Cutter, not past Sammy. Game over. And we save one of our best performances for the last, beating our B-Wolves 4-1. Impressive game. We held them to three hits and had six strikeouts. Meanwhile, we had 14 hits, 
And Nate Bell finishes with a perfect average. Well, not perfect average, but it's exactly 400. That is how you end the season. So our season comes to an end at 6 and 10. And I think that we'll be better next season, but it was a fun year. A lot of ups and downs. It was a roller coaster ride for sure. The end, though, was great. I want to see the final stats of the season, and maybe Nate Bell wins the batting title. He's going to be very close. And here we go. It's raining. No playoffs for us. It's the Super uh, Division Championship between the Bee Wolves and the Crocodons, and then the Moon Stars and the Moose. So here are the final stats. We'll go league leaders first. Hoping for some good news. Nate Bell batting title, 400. There you go. Marcus Calhoun second in home runs, tied with Juanita Hernandez, but nobody in the top 10 for RBIs. Gotta score more runs next year. In terms of extra base hits, Calhoun is up there. Nate Bell first in actual hits, or just hits. This was really fun. Marcus Calhoun led the league in, or uh, led our team in runs scored. ERA, Sammy Hawthorne finishes with a 260. Best on our team. Now our team stats. Most hits goes to Nate Bell. Calhoun right there behind him. Then home runs, Marcus Calhoun hits seven. RBIs, Calhoun, Riley, and Terrence Johnson. For average, Nate Bell. Marcus Calhoun, a 354. Much better first half than second, though. Riley was at 300. Carlton Sanders was 3 for 9. Nataki Mason, 4 for 13. How about doubles? That'd be Nate Bell. Triples, Marcus Calhoun. Walks, Michael Riley. And Terrence Johnson, sadly, for strikeouts. Steals, that'd be Nate Bell. And then for pitching... Most wins, Nataki Mason with two. Sammy Hawthorne had the only respectable earned run average in terms of innings pitched. That'd be Nataki Mason, number one. Hits, or batting average allowed. Best is Sammy, worst is Spencer Cooper. Most strikeouts, Nataki Mason, six of those in the final game. And home runs, Papa and Mason both give up eight. So there are the numbers for you this year. And now it's time to simulate the playoffs, as next episode will begin the second season with this team. So the B-Wolves take the first game, 6-2, and then someone's pulling away. Uh-oh, a comeback, and the B-Wolves advance to the league championship. Who are they going to face? An even series here, one apiece, and a win for the Moonstars. So in the championship game... I wish I could tell who was actually scoring which. Moonstars take game one. Can the B-Wolves get one back? Yes, they can. It's going to a game three. And the Moonstars are your league champions. So, they are the top dogs entering next season. They're a team that didn't really make the postseason much. Let me get back into season mode here. But we were used to seeing the Sirloins make it. And I believe the Moose, most of the time, can I get to any of the numbers here? There we go. So the Moonstars at 12-4 and four end up the winners this season. And we'll try it again starting next episode. And let's just see playoff stats and then we'll transition into the next year. We have league leaders, Dominic Carter in batting average, Darren Rose in home runs. The playoffs were weird. How about pitching? I don't see Andy McKenzie on here. I think that we uh, ruined his mojo in that game. That's very possible that his mojo is just so far down. I know he struck out at least once. So that was a good game. Good episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one. We conquered the B-Wolves, but they'll be back again next season. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this first season. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.